So if you're looking for a new chili recipe, I've got one today I think you're really going to love. Uh, we're going to spice things up with my brat chili. That's right. Instead of ground beef, I'm actually using brats to make this. So um, sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and uh, we're going to work on recipe number one. So I do a white chicken chili. Of course, I do several different ground beef chilies. I do a steak and beer chili. Um, and when I was trying to come up with a fun different chili, I thought, well, I've got some brats in the freezer. You know, normally when I use brats, I just use them to, you know, for cookouts and things like that, grill them up. Why not do a brat chili? So this is what I came up with. It's really, really easy and very, very delicious. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take the uh, brats out of the casing, which Ann went ahead and did some of those already. Um, but basically, you just take a knife or um, kitchen shears and split open the casings and then just squeeze that meat right out of there. Very, very easy to do. And you want to make sure and get uncooked brats. And then the meat, that ground pork with all the seasonings, very, very easily right into our big soup kettle and we're just going to brown it up like I would ground beef. And it's going to have some nice flavor that ground beef doesn't have naturally. So I think everybody's going to love this chili. It's going to be something a little different. And I'm using about five or six broths. Ends up being about a pound, pound and a half. I'm just using my chop and stir to kind of get it going a little bit. I'm going to chop up some uh, pepper. This recipe calls for both a green and a yellow pepper, green and gold, but you know any two peppers would work. If your family absolutely doesn't do pepper at all, peppers, just you could certainly leave them out. But I love some green pepper in my chili, and the yellow I thought would add some nice color too. If I am doing chili and I know people are coming over for like a game day party or just a you know chili party, a lot of times I'll make it a day or two ahead and, and get it in the refrigerator. Something happens with chili and spaghetti sauces and sometimes soups where um, it tastes even better the next day after it's refrigerated. So like the flavors really can come together. Plus then you've got it out of the way and you just need to heat it up when company's coming. But if you need to make this in a real hurry, if this is something that you want to throw together after work, that's another thing I like about this recipe. It's not like an all day deal. You can actually have it from start to finish done in you know less than 30 minutes. So now to my ground up broths, which are just trying to make nice and crumbly so that you don't have big, big pieces. I'm gonna add onion, finely diced onion, both my green and my yellow pepper for some great color. That was a big pepper, so I think we'll leave some of it that we could garnish with. And I'm just going to get that going. These days the pork is so nice and lean that sometimes you might need to add a little bit of olive oil just to move it along a little bit. We love our copper olive olive oil. Now one of the keys I think to making really good chili is don't just dump the seasonings in at the end. You actually want to add them while your veggies and your, um, in this case, pork are cooking. Um, that, that way they'll toast up and really cook in there. So we've got quite a bit of chili powder, cumin, and today's show is all about spicing things up. So it's up to you how spicy you want this. This isn't going to be like a totally burn your mouth kind of chili, um, as in the heat factor. But we do have um, some red pepper flakes. 
about a quarter of a teaspoon, but you could certainly add more if you wanted to. Oh my gosh, if you could smell this, it smells absolutely delicious. And adding the spices right now makes all the difference in the world rather than just dumping them in toward the end once you've got everything else in there. We're really giving this chili some nice flavor. Also going to do a little bit of salt. And now it's just kind of one of those dump and go things. I'm using two types of tomatoes. One can of diced tomatoes with the juice and one can of, this is, and these are the 28 ounce size cans of tomato sauce. So this is going to make a nice big batch, but I'm going to be honest with you, if I'm making a big batch of chili like this, sometimes I'll double the recipe so that we've got plenty and it freezes really well too, especially if you've got company coming over. Okay. Now I also love beans in my chili. Um, I think beans add some great nutrition. They bulk up the chili and I just, I'm a big fan. My kids, I remember when I first used to make chili uh, for my kids, they'd pick out every little bean. You'd see their bowl and then the plate and every little bean would be on the side. Um, well, I just kept putting beans in, chili and other recipes, and all of a sudden one day, uh, there were no beans on the side. They were eating them and they were liking them. So that's one of my tips to get picky eaters to um, try different things. Just keep at it, keep at it. So at this point, we're using two different types of beans. And I love to, you know, kind of uh, have some surprises in the chili. Instead of just ordinary chili beans, I'm actually using um, black beans along with the kidney beans. And it's really important to rinse and drain the beans. Just a quick dump them into a colander, run some water over them, and that's going to get rid of that funky liquid that's in the can that you really don't want going in your chili. Pinto beans would be fantastic in here, and if you didn't want to take the time to go ahead and rinse and drain, um, chili beans, you can buy chili beans which don't need to be rinsed and drained because the, the liquid that they are in is actually um, got some chili, chili seasonings and things like that in them. So at this point we're just going to let this simmer a little bit. My one last ingredient is a little bit of beer. I love cooking with beer and wine. It adds great flavor and the alcohol is going to cook right off. If you didn't want to uh, use beer, you could certainly just do some water. We're going to throw a little beer in there and let this simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. Now, it's up to you how you want to serve this. My kiddos love um, the spaghetti noodles. That's a kind of a Wisconsin tradition. I didn't grow up that. When I had chili, it was just straight up chili. Um, but when I went to Marquette, when I went away to college, uh, the chili restaurants all there started with a base of spaghetti noodles and the chili went on top and then if you wanted beans and the fixings it went on top of that. So that's what my kids have grown up with here in Wisconsin. So we cooked off some spaghetti noodles and uh, we're going to serve those in the bottom of the bowl with the chili on top. But I just want to let this simmer for another 15 minutes or so just uh, until the flavors really come together. And of course, whenever you're doing chili, the fun part about it is all the fixings, right? So um, when you, you know, put your chili uh, on the table or in a slow cooker, you got to set out a whole bunch of different fixings. Um, oyster crackers and saltines and I love crushed Fritos in my chili and, and shredded cheese and jalapeno peppers, um, maybe some extra uh, yellow peppers in this case, some, some chopped green onion, cilantro. Uh, just, you know, be creative. Jalapeno peppers and different hot sauces for people who like a little kick. Sour cream, got to have a little, just a little dollop of sour cream on my chili. So just different ways to make it fun. So I'm going to let this do its thing and hang out just a little bit and then I will serve it up and coming up lots more ideas to spice up your life. We have um, just some fun different recipes with a little bit of a kick to them and some fun ideas on ways to spice up your home too. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We will be right back.